Startopia is one of the most unique games that I've ever played. It's for good reason as well. Startopia was released in 2001. It was developed by Mucky Foot Productions and published by Eidos Interactive. The developers consisted of ex-Bullfrog employees who released a bunch of classics such as Populous, Dungeon Keeper, Theme Hospital, and many more notable examples. As I said previously, this is a unique game, similar to many of the Bullfrog classics. However, is this game worth a purchase? We'll take a look as we analyze the graphics, audio, and of course, the gameplay. Now let's start off with the graphics, and since this game was released in 2001, those are the standards that we will be using. Just to let everyone know, I'm not running the game at the highest settings, and the reason why is because I don't really have a strong computer like I used to. Now with that said, even on mid settings, this game looks amazing, especially for the time. For the environments, each deck it looks different from the previous one. However, each segment that you unlock looks exactly the same from the previous one. While there is somewhat of a lack of variety in the environments, the environments themselves look really good. When things get dirty, you see the trash on the ground. The buildings reflect the condition that they're in. So if somebody's occupied using a building, you would be notified by a light on or off. And if the building is damaged, you'll notice it as well. The character models also look really good as well. There's a pretty decent variety when it comes to the alien types. I mean, you have your traditional greys, then you have some unique ones, and it's pretty cool to see each alien. Each alien is very expressive when you ask them if they're hungry, if they need health. They tell you they either shake their head, say maybe, or they nod if they really want to. It really helps in creating the atmosphere and the life in Startopia. Overall, there's very little com to complain about, and this is one of the best looking games for 2001. Therefore, I give this a 9 out of 10 for graphics. Visually, there's just a lot to like about this game, and I love just watching the aliens interacting with each other and the environments as well. It's a good looking game, and it really helped to push the boundaries in 2001. You received 5000 E from the ZM Conclave, and their most religious thanks. So the first thing I'd like to talk about are the voices, and there's really only two of them. One of them is the computer on the ship that talks to you in a British voice, which the person does a pretty good job, so there's no complaints there. There's also a trader named Arona, who comes and sees you every once in a while, and his voice is a pretty decent job. It's an alien voice on the deep side, and it works. You also have your alien chatter, which, you know, it's just basically gibberish, but it works for this game. Nothing special, but it helps to flesh out and create the atmosphere of Startopia. The strongest points when it comes to the audio is definitely the music. The music is superb and it really fits the atmosphere of this game. Depending on which segment of the ship that you're in and which deck, different music will be played. One cool sound effect that happens is when you zoom out and you're outside of the ship, you no longer hear the music and all you hear is outer space. It's actually pretty cool. Overall, the audio is great. There's very little to complain about when it comes to here. The music is great, the sound effects do well, and the voices are pretty okay. With all things considered, the audio gets an 8 out of 10. While none of the sound effects really stand out and the voices aren't anything special, the music is where the audio shines. And now it is time to discuss the gameplay. Now as soon as you start up this game, you have a few things to do. You create a profile and you get right into it. You can play a mission, do the tutorial, or go into the sandbox mode. However, I recommend that you start off with the tutorial. The reason why is because at its core, this is a business simulation game. There are a lot of variables and a bunch of factors that really come into play in this game. The learning curve is somewhat on the steep side, and to be honest, the tutorials do not do a good job in explaining the mechanics of the game. That's one problem I had right off the bat, and it took me some time to get used to the game. One thing I will say, however, is that the missions do a pretty decent job in explaining the mechanics of the game. During each mission there are new buildings that present themselves and the functions of each building is explained. Also as you progress through the missions you unlock new aliens, new aliens start to come aboard your ship and you learn their roles and functions in the game. Now the story in this game exists but it's really not anything worthwhile or even mentioning. You're pretty much just a new supervisor who's come in and replaced the old one 
and you meet characters along the way, but other than that, there's nothing too special about it. Now honestly, this game is pretty feature packed and there's a lot of things to talk about, hence the steep learning curve. For those who have played Dungeon Keeper or Theme Hospital, you'll get a similar vibe here. Your main objective in the game, whether you're playing a mission mode or sandbox, is to create a sustaining economy in space. This involves creating buildings and putting furniture inside of them. Each furniture serves its own purpose, whether it be a chair to sit down so they can wait to get examined, or possibly a workbench so they can examine and learn new technologies. Some buildings like this one, you drag out a floor plan and you put what you want inside of it, Others like the Labrotron and the Dynamat, the Dynomat, you can't really customize, you just plop it down and it serves its function. In Startopia, you have three different decks to manage. The engineering deck is the main deck where aliens enter your ship and many of the facilities will be found. The pleasure deck, as you can see here, contains all the shops and other services provided. This is where most of your income will come from. The bio deck contains all of your worshippers that you have hired. Also, you are able to adjust it using the terrain tools given to you. You can harvest various materials for you to use. Another huge element in this game is trading. Regardless of your buildings or what your status is, you will have a person named Arona who will approach your station and offer you various goods. This includes supplies, hard plans for buildings, technologies that you can research, and furniture. It is important to note that Arona does not have the best deals but he often provides you with the items that you need for your situation. He is easily the clutchest alien of all time. However, not everything is all fun in games and there are going to be a lot of problems that you will encounter. One of them will be enemy spies and criminals coming into your stations and making a muck of everything, killing your citizens and your workers as well. They also place bombs in each station that you'll have to find and disarm yourself. However, this is where one of the biggest problems in the game shows up, and that's the AI. You can't really directly control each of the people that you hire on your job, but you can indirectly control all of them. So I'm telling these guys to kill this dude that's a spy. However, nobody has been responding, and it's been taking forever just for somebody to go and attack him. And there are a bunch of people. He's in the security station, and nobody in the security is attacking him. Heck, I have about four or five just big dudes, just huge aliens, and they can't attack this one guy. They're too busy looking on the computer like, sorry, um, uh, too busy playing Pong right now. Tell me what happens when you're done, though. One of the biggest draws this game has is how you literally start from the bottom and make your way to the top. You literally see your transformation as you start from basically nothing and see it evolve to a working station and see a lot of people interacting with the buildings in your station. As I said previously, there is a lot to go over and if I was to go over every single facet this game has to offer, this would literally be a 20 minute review. However, I believe that I hit all my points that I wanted to address in the gameplay segment and that's why this gets a 7.5 out of 10 for gameplay. To reiterate my previous points, this game has a good variety of aliens that serve its own unique purpose. Each building is also important in creating a successful and thriving station. And it's cool to see your station go through, you know, the beginnings and come into a very successful station. However, the flaws come in the unresponsive AI and the somewhat steep learning curve this game has. And now for the closing thoughts. The first thing I said when this review started is that this is one of the most unique games that I've ever played. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's one of the best games that I've ever played. There is a lot of fun to be had and the game looks nice for the time. The music is cool and it has a nice comedic overtone that's really unique from other games and sets itself apart. That's really the one word I use to describe this game, unique. Not amazing, but unique. Therefore, I give an overall score of 8 out of 10. Fans of Dungeon Keeper and other games from Bullfrog will feel right at home with this one. You can find it on Good Old Games or on Steam. I recommend it to fans of the business simulation genre and some people that are looking to get into it. This will be a pretty good place to start, but it will be a bit difficult to get into. If you'd like to support my channel, you can support me on Patreon. I got a bunch of rewards for you guys if you dedicate a certain amount of money to me each month. 
my patreon link will be down below thank you guys for watching and this is powerhouse signing off